scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. This is not the greatest of the breakthrough. This is not the biggest of koinonia. i like us to cry that song. This can't be it. You are so much, you are bigger than this. Hey. You are so much bigger than us. Just the voices. Say it again, say it again. Yeah, yeah. No, this cannot be it. There is so much. Sing it as a prophecy Be from your heart. This, this is our testimony. This can't be. Come on, sing it one more time. Just the voices. You are prophesying to your life. Say, Lord, this cannot be it. No. I'm not where I was, but I'm not yet where I should be. As a family of faith, let's lift up our voices together. This can't be. God is so much. One more time, sing. One more time, sing. Come on, hold your hands together and begin to prophesy. This is not the greatest of my life. The vision the Lord showed me has not come to pass yet. This is not the biggest. Koinonia, pray in the spirit. This can't be it. In the visions that the Lord showed me, I saw nations, not a city. I saw nations, not a city. This can't be it. Come on, prophesy. This can't be it. This can't be it. I contend with the word. Lord, I thank you for the things that you have done. But there is a cry in my spirit. This can't be it. You are prophesying. It's a cry of destiny. This can't be it. Make sure you are prophesying. Sing in the spirit. The Lord showed you you will be a champion. This is not it yet. The Lord told you you will heal the sick in the visions of the Lord. You saw yourself liberating nations in the visions of the Lord. You saw more than this. This can't be it. Go to Pasikata. 
We are not camping around this realm. No way. No way. We are not camping around this realm of knowledge. This realm of grace. We contend for higher levels in the spirit. We will not stop fasting. We will not stop praying. We will not stop traveling. We will not stop building. The realm of our call, the realm of our destiny is bigger than this, higher than this, greater than this. Come on, lift your voice and pray. This can be it. Carry over, notwithstanding. Withdraw, notwithstanding. Prophesy, lack, notwithstanding. Poverty, notwithstanding. Infirmity, notwithstanding. This can be. This can't be it. My God, you're so much bigger than this. This can't be it. You are so much bigger than this. This can't be it. You are so much. You are so much bigger than this. This can't be it. You are so much, you are so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Hallelujah. Listen. Abraham had about 312 people and he thought that was all about his destiny. Little did he know that the call that was upon him was a generational call. That he would represent the portrait of a blessed man. When God called him out of where he was, he thought that there can be nothing higher. Let me tell you something. The greatest enemy of success is the last one you had. Because it can create complacency and make you feel that all to the circumference of your destiny is that. The Bible says the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And one day they told him, they say, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. I tell you, the choir got it on the spot in the spirit. We are still going to pray for five minutes. I just feel we need to let this rest. Because there are many things speaking to some of you. It's like there is a limit that life and culture has created over you but tonight you need to challenge everything the bible says listen the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it says they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every yetzah every imagination that attempts to exalt itself your past failures notwithstanding this can be it come on prophesy let the devil hear you speak let angels hear you speak though he slay me yet will i praise him the bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down he said at the scent of water lord this can't be it challenge yourself throw away complacency tell yourself this is not what i saw in my vision no he showed me nations not a city he showed me greatness not mediocrity and all the families of the earth not the city of zaria all the families of the earth shall call you blessed you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, 
until you get to the utmost part of the earth yes lord it's calling us deeper 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 that's the secret in the spirit you first will go deeper deeper Deeper, then you can go higher, higher, higher. The Bible says, Listen, it says, The remnant of the house of Jacob they shall bear root downwards, and then they will bear fruit upwards. There is no upward movement until your root is solid, grounded, established in truth. This is what we seek to do. Every time we gather, if you don't have a seat, stand. If you cannot sit, find the ground. Do not allow anything limit you. There is a curriculum of the spirit. Faithfully see that will endure to the end. Because the Bible says to that one they will be given a crown and a white stone. No man who warreth will entangle himself with the things of civilians. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, worship team. Listen, there is an end to every spiritual pursuit. This is not a vain, this is not a vain seeking of something that is ambiguous. We are not confused about what we are pressing into. Are you listening to me? We are not confused week after week. The Bible says, He that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life eternal. But he that soweth unto the flesh, he will reap corruption. We are not just chasing after shadows. No. No. There is a definiteness guaranteed by the integrity of the word that we will arrive there. Are you listening to me? So every time you have the opportunity to show up in his presence, realize that this is your demonstration of your willingness to proceed in this spiritual journey. For there is an end to all things. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, if the cloud be full, there is an incense of sacrifice that is being raised week after week. You may look like a fool doing it, but there is the God who sits. And the Bible says righteousness and justice. Ah, God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. Whatsoever any man sows, that will he reap. There is a seed you are sowing. And there is a God who sits upon a throne backed up by justice. He will see to it according to Jeremiah 1 12. The Bible says he is alert and active, watching over his word to bring it to pass. And so your success in life does not become a mistake. It is men who do not understand the part of the spirit that criticize great men because they do not know that it is on, upon the bowels of much traveling and alignment in the spirit that you command power in the heavens. It's not a gift, it's a reward. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we have 
come to the end. Just the voices. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. 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 I made a vow with my life and with destiny that I will not stop until my destiny looks like the visions that the Lord has showed me. This is why I don't get distracted with the frivolities of men. The journey is still far. Regardless of what it is that men say, I don't have time to waste my time. There is an urgency upon my spirit. Many of us just take one or two steps and then you stop there. Uh -uh. You must contend in the spirit. Every time God wants to challenge me, he, he, he reintroduces to me the visions of the Lord that he showed me. And it puts a fire upon my bones. When you come to the end of yourself, then you are ready to begin a journey with him. This is not a special number. The songs that we sing are deep songs of the spirit. They are an attempt to be able to articulate and communicate certain things. We have come to the end of us. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of us. Hallelujah. Listen. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. You won't go to hell. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. When it comes to the walk with God, the experiential work with the Holy Spirit in the kingdom. Listen. No man cajoles you. It's sad that the body of Christ is full of pranks and tricks and cajoling. Great men are not made that way. For the birth of anything valuable is painful. It is as soon as Zion travails that she puts forth a son. Many of us are used to all kinds of pampering. No! 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 When it comes to the realm of greatness, you must gain structure and dexterity in the spirit. It will cost you your time. It will cost you sacrifice. You will make decisions that are uncommon. But at the end of that, there will be a crown. Hallelujah. There must first be a desire in your heart. To leave the realm where you are. I don't compare the standard I want to become with many people in our generation because it's an apology. When I read about the fathers of old, I, I, I am challenged. What did these ancient people see? What realm did they touch that made them like immortals upon the earth? Hebrews begins to leave them. It says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They shut the mouths of lions. There is a realm that is deficient in the body of Christ. We have lost touch with reality in the spirit. There is a call for us to return and contend for the things that are genuine, lasting and potent. Where the Holy Spirit does not become a strange personality. This is why we call this koinonia. This is a place where we expose you to the reality of a personality, not a phenomenon. A personality that is able to help you and make your life become a wonder. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Always our cry. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Call His name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you 
are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Just the voices one more time. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. When this become the anthem of your life, the things that men die chasing after will be given unto you at a platter of gold. It will be the reward of your consistency with the Spirit. Hallelujah. If your heart is determined to pursue Him, to seek Him, you will get power, you will get fame increase influence he said one thing is needful you are running around chasing after many things one thing is needful one thing is needful this is the first message to many of us tonight hallelujah many people are looking for the secret of many things success power anointing grace increase but let me tell you something in my little journey i have found out that the holy spirit is called the fountain of life he is the universal set consisting of everything that you will want i didn't start my journey with any hidden agenda i've said it again and again i was not looking for anointing i was not looking for power I was not looking for crowd i was not looking for recognition my heart was panting after the reality of the kingdom experience because i was dissatisfied with the status quo and the things that men have camped around something in my spirit told me this was not it and as i began to contend and get deeper into this journey that I did not know the mission was follow me God did not give me any assurance on the way hmm. God did not promise me a crowd God did not promise me I'll be wearing suit one day but he promised me his presence and he kept that promise I'm not obliged to accuse God for anything because he kept what he said he will give me his presence his glorious presence when you have that presence you command every other thing i mean it you will literally command every other thing this is the master key the glorious presence of god it should not just be a church thing it must become a reality and the Lord walking with them. And as a result, confirming the word, not their word, the word with signs following. And the Lord. Moses said, do not let us. We have no ministry outside his presence. Do not let us depart. Oh, but if he will go with me, I will go anywhere. And there is one guarantee. Exploit unlimited. Satan notwithstanding. Because of his divine presence. He's the Holy Ghost. Don't join me. You're the Holy Ghost. I call you the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Breathe on us tonight. 
breathe on us. You are the Holy Ghost, the presence of the living God. You are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Change our lives now. Change our lives now. Have your way. Have your way. Just pray one prayer and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. From the depths of your heart, I surrender all. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lamb. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb, awesome, awesome is the Lamb, awesome, awesome, awesome hallelujah, Spirit of the living God. We are gathered tonight in this place. It will never become a traditional display of religion. Nor will it be the vain quest of men to seek relevance. But it will remain the tabernacle of glory. Where you are building and raising and training great people. We dissociate ourselves from the frivolities and the vain quest to seek significance after or outside your presence for in thee is the fountain of life and in thy light do we see i praise you and bless you tonight we sit at the feet of the great rabbi teach us the mysteries of the kingdom that will prepare us let us eat the bread of the spirit for the journey is far strengthen us O god that we will bear root and be stable in our Christian experience. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. Please hug three or four people. Tell them God bless you and be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for coming, everyone. Hallelujah. It's always a privilege. I apologize for all the people who are having to stand. I assure you, this is not a waste. Not when you are doing it for His Majesty. May the Lord cause the nations to stand before you. Because they will stand in awe. Hallelujah. I rather stand before God than to stand begging and clamoring for the attention of men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. It is always a privilege, always a privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us. I have never considered it as a right. I didn't earn it. This is an election of grace. Before I was born, God has been blessing and raising people. And if he tarries after we are gone, there will still be the impact of the Spirit. Look, sit down anywhere you find. 
If you can sit on stage and you won't feel embarrassed, go ahead. We're excellent people and we're organized. But not too organized to rob people of entering their glorious destiny. Hallelujah. There is a longing that only you can feel. A raging tempest that only you can steal. My heart is thirsty, Lord, to know you as I'm known. Drink from the river that flows before your throne. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Would you take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before? I just want to love you more and more How I long That's my desire That's my desire All the time My desire is not to be a great preacher I'm telling you Being a great preacher does not heal the sick It doesn't cast out devils it doesn't change destinies. I desire to know Him. I desire to know Him with all my heart. There is an urgency in my spirit that is not bound to this realm nor anything this realm can offer. It is my singular pursuit. As far as I'm concerned, I have not begun ministry yet. This is only the preparation for an extraordinary life. I want to challenge you even as we start. Your desire for God must be genuine. Otherwise you will be tired later on. Hallelujah. It's good to receive from God. It's good to receive. That's why we have miracle services. Where we trust the Spirit of God to release great things into the lives of men. But let me tell you, if your circumference of your pursuit for God is centered around the things you will get, your Christian experience will be poor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Tonight we'll be considering something. Please bring out your notebooks, whatever you have to write. I want to teach tonight on the walking knowledge of the word. The walking knowledge of the word. It's the Greek word epignosis. The walking knowledge of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John 8. How many of you believe God is here? Those of us who are pastors and men of God or will be called into ministry, listen, let me give you a frank advice. If you have the best stage in the world and you have the best of media people, you wear the best of suits and you lack the presence of God, you are wasting God's time and the time of His people. Hallelujah. All of those things are only relevant if you can sustain the presence of God. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. 
peace be to you when Messiah comes to take us home may his praise be found in you Shalom 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 Jerusalem Shalom 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 Jerusalem Lord we will give you no rest until we become the Zion of our Lord experientially. Thank you, Jesus. John 8. I'd rather not have a ministry and have his presence. I rather be considered a failure and have his presence when you have his presence you have everything learn this when you have his presence you will have every other thing I cannot burn this enough into your spirit everybody listen when you have his presence you have everything the presence of God is the end of every argument. The end of every contention. Let your presence never depart from this house, O God. Let it please you, Majesty, to make this place a tabernacle of your presence. You called it Koinonia. This is a place where we meet. Let this be the gates of heaven. Let nothing in this place turn into religion. Let it not be the simple quest of men to make meaning out of their lives. Lord, that you will find a place that you can tabernacle and build men and train men holy spirit you will find full expression in the midst of your people your presence we covet greater weights of your presence greater than any revelation hmm. greater than any anointing the presence of the living god presence of the living God. Lord, we honestly desire you. This is a true commitment from our hearts. On behalf of your people, Lord, we express a desperation. We want to see all of you manifest in our lives. We know that there is an extraordinary life destined for us in Christ. And we labor in the spirit to apprehend that which has been kept aforetime for us. So help us, O God, tonight as we advance in this sincere quest. It's a preparation for a fire and a revival that the earth has not seen. You brought everyone here by your predeterminate counsel. Teach us, great rabbi. We sit before your holy presence, break the bread of the Spirit and cause understanding to be crystallized upon us. May we not be men void of spiritual understanding. Strengthen our hearts out of the abundance of the deposit of spiritual things that you will put in us. 
give us grace to be able to read the writings on the wall that we may stand among the great and command power in this realm we thank you because it is your great desire to do this we yield ourselves to you O oh great one breathe upon us tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah John 8 verse 32 the working knowledge of the word this is what I want to teach on tonight hallelujah and you shall know the truth and the truth that you know not that is available the truth that you have that you know will make you free the word know the truth there is the Greek word epigenosko is the complete and accurate knowledge of anything that brings the person who is knowing and what is known into oneness hallelujah and you shall know there will be an intercourse between you and the truth and as a result you will experience liberty you will experience freedom the limitations that and the encumbrances of life that keep you at the lower echelons of life will give room and you will celebrate freedom it says you shall know the truth not that you will hear about the truth you will know it's one thing to hear it's another thing to know hallelujah this realm is governed by knowledge write it this realm is governed by knowledge the degree of light that you have isaiah 61 verse 1 it says arise comma shine it says for your light is come arise shine not because you want to arise not because you this is not an issue of desire here it is the byproduct of the coming of your light arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you this is the prophecy verse 2 it says for darkness shall cover the earth and deep gross darkness darkness symbolizes confusion ignorance gross darkness upon the people it says but the lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen in you verse 3 as a result it says the gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles unbelievers will be compelled by your light the knowledge that you have and even kings will come to the brightness of your rising this realm listen listen please this realm is governed by knowledge this realm is not governed by miracles it's not governed by guesswork as good as miracles are the earth is not governed by miracles a miracle is only necessary because there is a violation of a principle hallelujah are you listening to me hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet began to lament speaking under the inspiration of the holy spirit he says my people are destroyed my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge listen it says because you have rejected knowledge i will also reject you from being a priest 
That means it takes knowledge. Everybody say light. Everybody say light. Knowledge. This realm is governed by knowledge. That means the limitation that you have in life is the limitation of knowledge. For you will only arise to the degree to which your light comes. I'm convinced that where I am in life and the limitations in my life are the limitations of light. And so the remedy is to contend. The Bible says he made many lights. All of those many lights have their dimensions but he made two great lights. Two great lights. And at the emergence of those lights they silenced all those little lights. He says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. I've said it and I've said it again and again that if that light comes, you will rule both in the day and in the night. Hmm. Hallelujah. So where you are today, seated looking at me, is where your realm of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things have kept you. I am convinced that no enemy and no devil can keep a man when his knowledge has lifted him higher. There are two ways to bind Satan. One is by prayer. The other is by knowledge. Your knowledge can make you live as if Satan does not exist. They know not, the Bible says, neither do they understand. They will grow up in darkness. And so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Psalm 82. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Are you there? Okay, Psalm 82. Can you give us Psalm 82? Let's just look at it from the Amplified. It's possible. Everybody say after me, I go for knowledge. I refuse to remain where I am. I go for knowledge. If you will believe this, this is a very powerful revelation. That where you are today is because of the limitation of your knowledge. From verse 4. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rescue them out of the hands of the wicked. Verse 5. The magistrates and judges know not. This is talking about you. You will understand that from the context of verse 1. It says, Neither will they understand. And as a result, they walk on it in darkness. What is the darkness there? Of complacent satisfaction. As a result, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Verse 6. This is God speaking to the great. He says, I have said ye are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. The last verse. But you shall die as mere men and fall as one of these princes. Everybody say knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Working knowledge. Not theoretical knowledge. Epignosis talks of the working knowledge. Knowledge that can be applicable to bring you results. Many of us have all kinds of religious junks and theory that cannot stand the test of time. So many, listen, we, we live in a generation of rema and knowledge. There are people who can quote Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. We have a lot of theoretical knowledge about different aspects of the Christian faith. But none of this knowledge is potent enough to deliver to us the reality of what the word says will be. 
He says, ye search the scripture, for in them ye think ye will find life, and ye will not come to me. He said, the letter killeth, but the spirit quickeneth. That should be Psalms, I mean, John 6, 63, I think. John 6, 63. The words that I speak unto you. It says, it is the spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatsoever. The words, the truths. That's why the Bible says, ye shall know the word. Ye shall know the truth. I have been speaking to you as spirit and life. Everybody say, I contend for knowledge. The walking knowledge of the truth. I began to edit my life some years ago. And I found out that I had many useless, though spiritual knowledge. Useless, though spiritual. Because I used it in the face of danger and it was helpless. So I knew that this was nonsense. If it is the word of God, it should carry in it the life of God to deliver results. Is that correct? And so I began, I made a resolution that I was not going to waste my time junking myself with religious knowledge that is not able to produce results in my life. There are people who have heaps of books in their houses. They've read everything. But knowledge that is vain. Let me show you something very powerful. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, that should be chapter 12. From verse 10. Are you getting blessed? Please take seriously what I'm sharing. I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that everyone will receive. Ecclesiastes 12. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. That which was written was upright and verse 11. It says, The words of the wise are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12. Listen. It says, And further, by this my son be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Now this is not saying you should not study. You understand the context? Junking yourself with all kinds of knowledge that only makes you feel that you are making progress but you are not making any progress hallelujah there are weariness to the flesh 13 he said let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man you can stop there could it be that the knowledge you have been having is only puffing you up but it's not delivering results that means there is need to convert your theoretical spiritual knowledge into the walking knowledge the walking knowledge i learned this from bishop david oyedeko remains my lifelong mentor in the area of wisdom a man who has contacted the spirit of wisdom knowledge that can be applied if you study glass technology and this glass is broken and you carry it and throw it away of what good is your knowledge are you listening to me walking knowledge practical applicable knowledge there are many people who know almost all the scriptures and demons come and oppress them and they are helpless it means your knowledge is not applicable it's not working hallelujah are you receiving something and i want to challenge you tonight and expose you to the principles that can help your knowledge become experiential you can know that what you know can work for you listen can i tell you something there is a waiting process in faith but the waiting time is not forever the end of faith is a performance this is what validates the waiting time thank you jesus 
The first thing I want to talk about is the supremacy of God's word. Everybody write the supremacy of God's word. The supremacy of God's word. God's word in this realm is the final authority over the affairs of men. God's word is the final authority. Final authority when it comes to the affairs of men. Your experiences notwithstanding. Your experiences do not have the capacity to validate the word of God. The word of God is that standard, is that benchmark that all other things revolve around. That means... When your Christian experience is not tilting you towards the reality of the word of God, you can check and know that something is wrong with your life. There are many ministries that build their churches and their ministries around spiritual experiences. Never build your Christian life just around visions and dreams. You will get into a lot of demonic error. That's the problem with a lot of people. They are always seeing something every day. And they never consult the word. And so it leads them into blind error. They are like a pendulum. Swinging from left to right. Can I tell you something? Those who will last in these days. Are men who give priority to the word of God. Not men who have visions and dreams. I believe in spiritual experiences. But the realm of the spirit is such a complex realm. You must only look at it from the realm of God's word. To pick out that which is relevant to your destiny. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are seeing visions and someone is an ardent student of the word, that student feels very inferior. He feels me, I'm not seeing anything. And we brag about the things that we see and hear in the spirit. Do you not know that your experiences have not been tested, but the word of God has been tested seven times through every dispensation and it has been found to last. If you build your church upon the word of God, I don't care what men say, it will stand. If you build it upon visions and prophecies, get set, they will fall. If you build your miracle, there are many men of God who build their miracles around anointing. As good as that is, I feel very sorry for them. The word of God. The spirit and life of God. God is only commanded to go anywhere his word attracts him to. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? The supremacy. When you come to a point where you realize that the word of God is the final authority. Everybody say final authority. Concerning any area. If it's your finance, the word of God is the final authority. If it's your well-being, the word of God is final authority. So if I tell you, you will not die. And you say, ah, the man of God has spoken to me that I will not die. That is wonderful. But can I tell you something? There is a more sure word of prophecy. That you find out in God's word. That I shall not die but live to declare. Any other prophetic word that comes only comes as a confirmation. Listen, my life is grounded upon solid. I thank God that I did not start my spiritual journey on visions and dreams. I started it upon the solid foundation of seeking the word. Hallelujah. There are many people who will not believe the word of God until a man of God stands and prophesies and speaks it to them. There are many people who cannot take the word of God and believe. And say, look, this word guarantees certain things. Thank God for the gifts in the body. But do you know that the word of God is greater and bigger than any man of God? And that at the revelation of the true revelation of this word, you can open up any closed door. Koinonia is not running on guesswork. That's why we don't give ourselves heart attack for once. We are running upon the infallible, irrefutable, working, practical knowledge of God's word. Did you hear what I said? 
We are not walking upon just a blind prophecy. Practical. Irrefutable. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abided forever. What is your life built upon right now? There are many of you, our lives are built upon shadows. The day the man of God who has become the anchor to your life is not around, you are dead. Our churches are full of gullible people who are just running. Oh, prophet, just tell me something. Just touch me, just touch me. And they don't know why. Now, I believe in these vessels. You will get something because they are anointed. But did you know that you are only established to the degree to which you have the working knowledge of God? If someone looks at me today and says that witches had a meeting that I would die, I'm not even going to pray about it. I tell you, I have too many important things. My 24 hours has been well sectioned. There is no space for frivolities. Hallelujah. This is why you find out that there are ministries that have a lot of crowd but no growth. No spiritual growth. Gullible beggars looking for men of God chasing after people everywhere that should be built and established in truth. It's God's desire. Shame on us if all we have in this place is a crowd of people sitting everywhere with little or no spiritual knowledge. This is why we dedicate only one Friday in the whole month. We sit under the word of God and feed you with truth that will build you so that you will now begin to command results and bring blessings to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is very powerful. There are all kinds of books that have been written about church growth, church planting, church principles, advancement. I've read some of those books and I'm sorry to tell you they are just junks. Those who wrote them do not even have a working knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shall thou make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Everybody say the supremacy of God's word. The word of God reigns supreme over your life. Anybody that is leading you into any spiritual dimension outside God's word is a herbalist. Run! Don't pray! That's why before we begin ministering to you, we make sure that we show you the scriptural foundation upon which we do everything. And this is why he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Very important! You must have a walking, practical, experiential knowledge of God's truth. If I ask you today, why will you be successful in life? What will be your answer? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you. But if I ask you, if someone asks you right now, say, sister, can you stand up? Don't worry, I won't ask you. Stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. If I ask this lovely lady now, and I say, why are you, are you going to be successful in life? That's the only one I will ask. She said, definitely. But listen, did you know that success is not the issue of willpower? Forget about willpower has never brought anybody success. It's not even a function of resolution. When I see your investment in the word of God, I can predict your future. Hallelujah. I don't care what confessions you are making. If I do not see you contending for the truth of God's word, I know you are wasting your time and the time of others. Hallelujah. Say after me, the word of God reigns supreme. Yes. It must reign supreme. That means the following, number one. Your life must be compelled to live by the principles of the word. Your life must be compelled 
Notice I use the word compel. It says mortify your body. This body is stubborn. Your life must be compelled to come under the governing influence of the word. A believer is not just one who talks church things. A believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the word. That the word of God becomes your basis of judgment and decision. Are you listening to me? Is someone learning something? So listen to me. Hold on. Now I want to open a shop. Hallelujah. The first thing is not to run and look for capital. The first thing is to run to the word of God. And find out what is the economic program that the word of God has earmarked for the success of the believer. If you are not doing that, I feel sorry for whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. You want to get married. The first thing is not to say, Kai, Pastor Jakes, I saw this beautiful girl. Mm -mm, leave that girl alone. Run to the word. The walking knowledge. Hallelujah. And then you begin to study. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a bad thing. And so you say, wow, there are many ways to get good things in life. One of it is marriage. That becomes your basis of joy. And then you now check. One can conquer a thousand. Two can conquer ten thousand. That means you expect acceleration and increase in your life. Listen, many people do not allow the word of God, the applicable knowledge. We have knowledge that we cannot use. We cannot try. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He didn't say thy word is a book in my hands. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. That's guidance. And a light to my path. That's direction. The moment there is anything in life, the first thing, the first place to run to is the word. Search it out. Stay with the word until light breaks forth. People fast. They have no revelation of what they are doing. So it becomes a meaningless spiritual exercise. People do night vigils. They only do it because they are emulating those who have been successful. That's the reason why something can be blessing somebody else and be killing another person. The same thing. Lack of light. Hallelujah. I never do anything in my life because people are doing it. Never. People can be running. I'll just sit down and be looking at them. They say, won't you join? I say, me? Go where? Who is going to shorty my running? Who is going to take responsibility for when God does not send you, he doesn't back you. I never do anything. That's why you notice that we don't do anything in this place except God directs us. And when God directs us, we are committed to it. Doggedly. What has been governing your life? What has been governing your life? For many of us, we do not have time for the word. We have time to discuss our problems with everybody. We have time to run around chewing from morning till night in the homes of prophets. And apostles and teachers and every kind of person. But we do not have time for the word. You just spend five minutes inspiring women or rhapsody of realities or every day with Jesus. Thank God for these resources. But you give your academics only that time and see if you will excel. What makes you believe? The clearest proof of love is the investment of time. Whatever you love, you will have time for it. That you do not love the word of God and spend time is a sign that is not a priority for you. Hallelujah. How amiable are your words, O Lord. They are my meditation day and night. You know, many of us do not understand the dynamics of how the written word will translate into making, improving the quality of your life. Predominantly because we have not been taught. Hallelujah. I spend a major portion of my life and time 
building upon the word. Because the word will give me what people are chasing after. The light breaks from the word. I sit under the word. Scrolling from page to page. Searching for spiritual principles and mysteries. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Has the word of God become ultimate and final authority over your life? This is the question God is asking us. Many of us live as if we are not Christians. You live as if you are children of the devil. But when we come to church, we behave. Our decisions come from Nigerian films and advices from friends. The word of God is always the last resort for many people. When they've tried every other junk and it does not work. You meet somebody who is going through a predicament in his life and recommend scriptures and give the person, they'll go and throw it away. But tell the person, wake up by 12. Stand at the right side of your house. Wear only boxers. Look at the sky for 10 minutes. And say, I am free. I am free. I am free. They'll say, I like it. This is the kind of thing I like. Because we have not been taught the power of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. He says, and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Oh, that you will understand the glory. You will understand how organized your life will be. If you will give time to the word of God. Do you know how Satan makes us to run away from God's word? Distraction, distraction, distraction. Many of us are too busy and it's not God that gave you what is occupying you. It is your vain quest for ambition. I'm sorry for anybody who wants to ever be successful in life and will not first sit down with the word of God. The word of God will ease your journey in life. The word of God will guarantee your arrival. In a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The word of God. See, when the word of God becomes the basis of anything you do, your results are predictable. Koinonia will never be less than it is now. You know why? There is the working word that is granting us grace. Hallelujah. The supremacy. God is asking you a question tonight. You know, whenever I am saying these kinds of things, ladies think I'm taking them personal, but I, I need to hit you people very well because you are, you are the victims. Some of you are looking at me the way you are looking at me. This word is just jumping and passing. There are all kinds of soils. Why don't you settle with the word? One thing, matter, matter, you are concerned and upset about many things. Many of us believe that when you are connected to so 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 and so person, you will be prosperous. Let me tell you ahead of time, you are wasting your time because the greatest of any man is a man. Are you listening to me? Some of us are depending on the blessings of our... Some of us are depending on our degrees. Some of us are depending on any... Let me tell you, anything you are depending on that is not the word of God has already predicted your life. Doom. But happy are you when you find it. Happy are you when you find it. Right from the time... When there was nobody who would come around, the word of God already showed us a picture. Listen. Am I boring you? Are you receiving something? I'm challenging you because, see, the cruelty of life can only be immune. You can only be immune to it by the revelation of the word of God that you have. 
There is a whiplash of poverty coming upon people in ways in, in unprecedented dimensions that will turn Christians into beggars. But to you, to you who are within, who will take the word of God serious, you will find out that you are rising. Are you listening to me? I am convinced that no man can take my life. This is no longer a prayer point. It has become my conviction. And there are, there, there are a network of scriptures that have informed this ideology. It's not just because, do you know how many text messages people have sent to me? I saw you dying. I saw them shooting you. I said, let it remain from the realm of the dream there. Because it will never happen. You do not know how immune I am. He said, I will slay a nation for your sake. A nation. Not three armed robbers or four. A nation. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. This becomes the basis of our authority and audacity in the spirit. I will never become a failure in life. No, see, this is not, I'm not confessing it to make me believe. I'm speaking forth out of the abundance of that which has been settled in my heart. You know why? It's not because Jesus is alive alone. I found the keys. Hiya. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys, brothers and sisters. If you catch it, you have caught it. The Lord is granting you keys. If you have caught it, you have caught it. I will never, till Jesus comes, taste poverty again. Forever. No, see, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bragging. No, I have found it. I have found it. He said, I have found. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. He says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that baby. I called him alone and blessed him. Called him alone. So I decided to understudy the life of Abraham because the Bible tells me he's the biblical portrait of a blessed man. And the Bible says, and Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent. And he blessed Abraham and he said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. I found in the book of Malachi, he said, Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? The walking knowledge. I will never rob God of my time. Listen, God gives you 100%. And he says, give me 10% to prove that what the blessing I sent arrived to you. So that I can send another one. He said, bring ye all your tithes to my house. And prove me now here which saith the Lord. If I will not, number one, open the windows of heaven. Number two, shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Number three, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said you shall be called blessed and you shall be a delightsome land. Luke 6, verse 38, it says, Give! And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, for with the same measure you give, that is the measure you will be given. I found it. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be rich. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. The Bible begins to speak about God loving a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And then I found in scripture, Haya, he said the gift of a man, the gift of a man makes room. The gift of a man. 
and I have the greatest gift in me, the Holy Ghost. That means forever, there will always be room for me. When you build your life around the confidence of the word of God, you become unbeatable. Hallelujah. Koinonia will always remain blessed. Because I found in Hebrews 7.7, 7, it says, And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. And without contradiction, I found there the secret. Hallelujah. These are the principles that we are working with. People will keep coming for koinonia in ways that defy explanation. You know why? The Bible says, if I be lifted up. So that's the key. If I be lifted up, not a man of God. He say, I, I, Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is not given to any man. Hmm. Hallelujah. I found the secret of the anointing. This is not guesswork. Uh -uh. The secret of the anointing is not just impartation. Psalms 89. I have found my servant, David. When it comes to the things of the anointing, you must be a servant. This is the secret of revelation and power. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ which is sent unto his servant John that he should show unto his servants the things that must happen. Joshua chapter 1 the Lord speaking to Joshua said Moses my servant is dead. He said and as I was with Moses so I will be with you. What is your life standing upon? What is your life standing upon? Hallelujah. What is your life standing upon? Luke 10, 19. Forever settles the issue of the devil. It says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon snakes, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy and nothing. That's why I cast out devils and sleep like a baby. The devil that would distract me has not yet been manufactured in hell. I remember saying this years ago and somebody told me, you are making too much noise, so let the person see now. What is the framework of your confidence in the spirit? Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? The Bible says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou. You see why we talk about the presence of God? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me, not in the absence, but in the presence of my enemies. They need to be witnesses. You anoint my head with oil, and that anointing causes my cup to overflow. Hallelujah. I found the secret of commanding increase in any land. The Bible says, let the people praise thee. O oh God, let the people praise thee. And then the earth shall yield her increase. See, you are limited by your knowledge. Listen to me. You are limited. You are limited by your knowledge. If you will contend, many of us need to sit with the word of God and cry. We have a praying generation, which is great. But we have a wordless generation too. We have men and women who can pray for 12 hours. But they cannot sit with the word for 3 hours. And we have been made to believe that the moment you can pray and attack spiritual forces, they will go. You try it. This is why the prayer life of many people has no fire. And it has no power. Because their prayer is, is not consistent with the word of God. Jesus spent 3 years doing a teaching ministry with his disciples after that he released them and they shook their world they sat under his feet for three solid years day and night i write these things to you oh excellent theophilus all that jesus began to do and teach
all that Jesus began to do and teach. Your success can be predictable. It can be consistent. It can be stable. Hallelujah. I listed all the areas in my life that I know will be relevant for my human existence and I started supporting them with solid scriptures. There's no area of my life that I've left to chance. Hallelujah. Do you have a working knowledge of the truth? Have you found truth that you are running with. What are you running with? Many of us are running with luck and guesswork. How are you going to know that that is the job? Based on salary? Based on what? See, the life of many believers is, is too unpre is too is too slippery. We are not solid in our work. This is why we dwindle at anything. Whatever is happening, everybody's running. Something else is happening, everybody's running. When will you gain stability in the spirit? Hallelujah. We have a prosperous ministry forever. Because the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked? These are the conditions. So, fruitfulness and productivity is not just dash. There are conditions. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law doth he meditate day and night. What is the result? He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. And then it says, whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Everybody say the word is final authority over my life. See, some of you want increase. You want joy. You want grace. But you are obviously working against your own success. Because you are working against the world. Many of you, are, you want prosperity. But you are so greedy. There are some battles Satan cannot fight. The only way Satan can fight your harvest is to fight your seed time. I see a lot of people who want to be rich. You get angry when you see rich people. You get angry when you see blessed people. As though they are being blessed stopped you from achieving your own. When you see a blessed man who is blessed by kingdom principles, look at his giving life. The Bible says... As far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, or cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10, he said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflowing. Many of you are greedy and selfish and self centered. That's why you will never get the blessings of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many miracle services you attend. Don't be offended. I'm teaching you the principle that will help you. Hallelujah. Do not envy a giver. He cannot help his situation. He will remain blessed. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. By the grace of God. 
as soon as the offerings are collected before anything is done with the money i'm sharing these principles with you because i want it to work in your life 10 percent of it is taken on to god we can't stop being blessed it doesn't matter what your personal feeling is about it hallelujah you can be anointed and keep growing in the anointing are you listening to me there are many people who can be anointed and full of fire and then one day you find out that they are no longer anointed no that's anointing that came as a result of impartation without knowledge to back it i can lay hands on you and you begin to do supernatural things but your lack of knowledge will mislead you so it must be supported by knowledge say after me i contend for knowledge say i contend for knowledge i don't see limits in my life this is not because i read a motivational book i found out in god's word that if thou canst believe all things are possible not to a christian to him that believe if thou canst believe that's the only barrier if thou canst believe the bible says when they shall say there is a casting down for us our story is different we will say there is a lifting up i believe this i believe this hallelujah psalms 128 says blessed is the man that feareth the lord it says his seed shall be mighty upon the earth the generation of the upright will be blessed and all of that he begins to speak wealth and riches shall be in his house the fear of the lord that means the fear of the lord has a lot of blessings if you do not fear the lord why will you want his blessings see this is what people like david oyedeko and other people call the covenant they call it the covenant because once you play your part god is committed to his part hallelujah i found in life that when you solve people's problems you become blessed forever this is the secret of generational impact and influence many people think money makes a ministry impact brings blessings when you bless people they are too grateful to leave you the way they met you hallelujah the bible says the fire upon the altar shall not go down that's why we will not stop praying that's why i won't stop fasting and then shall thy light break as the morning access to unlimited insight and illumination of the spirit now that you know these things do you live by it do you practice it can i tell you something many of you have, have been accusing god but sit down this night and you will know god is fair you are the one who has been killing yourself is that true many of you know that no look god is just he told Cain. he said if you do like your brother will he not be accepted that's what he told Cain. Cain was angry that his brother's sacrifice was accepted i was watching dunamis tv and I saw Paul and Encher's wife, he was not around. And she was ministering in their healing and deliverance service. And I just sat down. I said, no, God, you are just. There is no partiality in you at all. If I do what that man is getting, I will get his result. Full stop. Period. Rather than criticizing people, especially for those of you who, in your small campus fellowship or this and that, you are already used to talk. Why don't you find out what they are doing? This, you see, let me tell you something. 
I say this with all humility. Don't misunderstand me. We have this ugly pride in the body of Christ. Huh? That we are all equal. Now, I believe we are equal. Listen, we are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in knowledge. We are not equal in grace. There are some people that have been given authority by reason of certain things. Doing business with the spirit in deep waters. The church of God has this ugly, arrogant way. When I see a man that carries something I don't have, I sit down. I don't come to him and say we are colleagues. Uh -uh. I sit down. When I'm listening to Oyedeko or any of this man of God, if you come, if you distract me, I will, I will drive you away. Because I'm receiving. Hallelujah. I wanted to know the secret of wealth because I knew it was going to be necessary because of the kind of life and ministry God is giving. And I didn't want to live this false life of begging people from left, right and center. I found out from scripture that God sent me to be a blessing to you, not a burden. I can't yoke you with my responsibilities. It's good to go and meet the one who called me. And so I went and met God. Do you know what? God told me he's not going to teach me anything. I should find vessels. That's where I found that scripture. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. In other words, God said, there are people who are commanding results in this area. Search for them. Be humble enough to sit under their feet and learn. And I said, fine. Got their materials, got their books. Sat down with an open heart and light broke from my spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. I remember one time I was I was praying and I, I, I slept off and I had a dream. In the dream, Bishop Oyedeko was sitting down and I came. And from my wallet, I took some money and I was dropping at his feet. When I took that money and I was dropping at his feet, he looked at me. He said, there's still some in the wallet. I should bring out everything. I brought out everything and I dropped it. And then he brought out a carton just out of a drawer. It was full of all kinds of currencies, mint. And he looked at me and the Holy Ghost spoke to me expressly. He said, the keys of prosperity that I gave Bishop Oyedeko, I have given it unto you. My life is a product of encounters that are a derivative of the word. Follow them. This is what I found in the word. Who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. So what do you need? Knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge. Knowledge. Could it be that that's what you need to live where you are to the next level? He told the woman, 2 Kings 4, he said, what do you have in your house? Listen to what she said. She said, a little. This was her, this was her problem. It was not the oil. The cruise holding the oil was little, so it could not do much for her. And the prophet told her what her solution is. He said, if you increase capacity, the oil will increase. Hmm. Knowledge. Where I am today. Oh, if you see the way I cry before God. What you see today is our mindset of yesterday. Wait and see what God is doing with us today. I tell you, there is, there is, there is, an, there is a wave that is coming. of the infallible word of God I can stake my life at this word unto death fathers have gone before us they took this same scripture who through faith subdued nations they shut the mouths of lions people did great things a man of God went to Lagos the first time he went to Lagos he slept under the bridge but right now, the world is celebrating that man. He's called Archbishop Sam Amaga. This word turned ordinary. Listen, listen to me. This word took ordinary people. Show me what you are doing with this word and let me tell you what your future will be. I don't need to be a prophet. Just show me. Let me see the value you are placing on this word. 
I can tell you what your tomorrow will be like. I respect the word. I don't just believe it. I submit to the governing authority of the word. I love the word. I love the word. Hear me tonight. I'm giving you a big key. Epignosis. I will find out the working knowledge concerning my finances. The working knowledge concerning success in ministry. The working knowledge concerning intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The working knowledge concerning miracles, signs and wonders. The working knowledge concerning church growth. The working knowledge concerning generational impact. The working knowledge concerning leadership. I found my way out of every nonsense in life. It's only a matter of time. I found my way. I found my way. Not when the word of God is here for me. Not when the Holy Ghost. I found my way. I'm telling you. Every factor notwithstanding. This is how you can rejoice in the Lord. He said rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Say after me I'm blessed. Let me tell you how you are blessed. You are not just blessed because a man of God saw that you marry a rich man. You are blessed because the gift of God's word has been given unto you. And the Holy Spirit. The word of God has not gained supremacy in the life of God. How many of us tonight can look at yourself and in all sincerity say, I'm living by the word. If you are living by the word, you will pack out of that guy's house. Because the Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That you are in his house, you are not married, you are sitting comfortably. You are violating the word. Don't think you will get the same result. See, people, let me tell you, the mercy of God does not override his justice. Hallelujah. You can't be smoking and drinking. Roaming around and giving God 10 minutes. And there is somebody laboring in the spirit. You think you will get the same result? No, sir. Straight to the point. Let me just tell you. It won't happen that way. Hallelujah. There are some of you in relationships with an unbeliever. This guy does not love God. What does the Bible say? It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It says, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? You know it, but it has not become a working knowledge. You have not submitted to the influence of that word. Are you listening to me? It is the word that you know. He said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you grow in character, when you grow in grace, the Bible says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for grace to be multiplied. And the more your knowledge, the more your peace. He said, grace and peace, shalom, be multiplied unto you. The supremacy of God's word. The second thing I want to touch on quickly and then we'll pray. Is the renewal of the mind. The principle of renewal. Please write it. When the Lord asked me to share this, I was very excited. Because somebody needs to hear it. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Who is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of lords. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise it says, for as he thinks in his heart, 
so is he look at me look at me those of you in business and entrepreneurial things those of you who are called into that area and have read business books there is the fundamental law in fact in ancient times they hid this law from people and they call it the law of attraction hallelujah this is a business law it really does not apply to us in that context but I, i'm just saying that to teach you something some of the wealthiest people in the world believe that it is this singular law that has brought them this the law of attraction praise the lord and the law of attraction says that every man is a living magnet that you attract to your life the things that are consistent with your most dominant thoughts hallelujah listen very powerful so every time a nation wanted to conquer another nation what happened they kept creating through the media the things that will make them think failure and defeat when they find out that they've taught failure so much the army will go and conquer them it worked like magic this was the principle adolf hitler used to conquer this was a principle that the roman empire used i've done an extensive research on it the law of attraction but the, the the danger of the law of attraction is they do not give credit to god they give credit to the earth they believe that the earth is a living entity and it can read people's thoughts that there are magnetic waves that leave you through your thoughts and it has an attracting power science students this is what isaac newton tried to study that he called the universal law of gravitation remember that's what he was trying he was trying to show the union between two different bodies the earth and any other body that there is an attraction between them so people called it the law of attraction so that means according to them that everything this is what gave birth to this principle of visualizing you see that they say visualize do this and that you know visualize um see yourself successful see yourself great see yourself this and that and that and that that's why the rich people have certain ideologies let me tell you where they took it from that's why i took you to that scripture proverbs 23 hallelujah it says for as he what god equates a man's thoughts with his life are you seeing it there he says for as he thinks where that is how he will become. I'm teaching you a powerful principle. Ah, so my thoughts. Run with me, Genesis 11. Let's look at it quickly. We are going to pray. I want to show you how powerful this principle are. That, that your most dominant thoughts have already started living before they manifest. Genesis 11. Verse 2. Let's just start from verse 2. And it came to pass, this was the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Listen, please. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks for stone and they had asal for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. Listen, Nimrod was creating an imagination in them he was telling them this is what we are going to do let's occupy ourselves with these thoughts are you listening to me i want to show you something powerful about the renewal of the mind and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth verse 5 but the lord came down listen so this was their imagination is that true the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built stop had they built it? Look at what God is saying. Is in your Bible. He says, let us see what the men had. They are finished building it. This is from God's perspective. Look at it now. Is it not on the stage? They said, let us start. The Bible says God came to look and said, these guys have finished this thing. As a man thinketh in his heart. This is a powerful principle listen if if you catch this you will change your life and destiny 
Brato Kasata Balakato Shetabaya. He says, Let us see what the sons of men had built. Ha! Question. They've not started. This was the board meeting to discuss. But what did God see in the realm of the spirit? This is what the business people call the law of attraction. That your thoughts are living to a point when it crystallizes, not even the devil can stop it. Let's finish up. Hmm. And the Lord said, listen, indeed, the people are one and they have all one language. Listen, he said, and this is what they begin to do. Ah, uh-uh, stop. I thought he said they have already built it. Is that true? Follow me. Help me now, Koinonia. Now he's saying, this is what they begin to do. Ah, he just saw from the realm of the spirit that they are finished. But they were about to start it in the physical. He says, now nothing that they have proposed to do will what? Was Satan mentioned in this equation? Even God testified. He said, if we don't stop these people, they will do it. How did God stop it? Seven. Verse seven. Come now. This is God. Oh, let us go there and confuse their language. This was God said, look. The only remedy is to break this unity, give them divided languages, divided thoughts. So, it is a language that creates thoughts. Are you following me now? I'm trying to establish something. Help me, believers. God did not say, let's go and change their mind. He said, let's just change their language. When their language changes, their minds will change and this building will crumble from the spirit show you a mystery you will live an unbeatable life let us change their language hmm. romans 12 i'm excited may somebody catch something tonight oh god god wants you to change your situation may somebody catch something tonight Verse 1. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, listen. When it comes to renewal, Paul is beseeching brethren by them. He said, this is too important. I have to beg you. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. It says, do not be patterned. The word world, yes, the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. That comes with this age. The thinking pattern. It says do not be conformed. To the thing. That means there is a thought process. That this world brings. And if you stay like that. You will never be successful. Are you listening to me? You see the reason why many people are failures. Before you are born. There is a system that has been organized. And the media is helping it. You don't know. Listen. Listen. One day I'm going to teach you something called the conspiracy of the rich. And you will see how a lot of people and our media is keeping us where we are. You see how the message of poverty helps you to attract all this nonsense to your life. We think it is a good teaching. The Bible says, as a man thinking. So the Bible says, since your thought is the same, words are what crystallize into your thoughts. Is that correct? For time's sake, we, not, we may not read it, but let me, let me just quote it quickly. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith, verse 1 to 3 actually, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, he said that for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand. Through faith. That the world, okay, we have it here. Listen, the world was framed by what? Okay, so we see the word here. But how did it happen? So that the things which were not seen, there was something in the mind of God. I'll never be a failure in life. Never. 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 See, don't just get emotional about this.
found my place. I did a teaching years ago called the law of atmosphere. I create only the atmosphere that allows the things of heaven to find expression. So you are dropping blue films in your house. You are dropping cigarettes and wondering why demons are, are oppressing you. Are you seeing that? Many of us laugh. You think it's nice. You don't find me using vulgar words. Oh, it's not for people like us. We are... No, 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 no. I'm guarding my heart. That's the next scripture. Quickly. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Say, guard your heart with all diligence. Seeing then that your heart is such a vital point in your destiny. The Bible says for us, one to read. Read it. It's projected. One to read. We're going to pray. Keep your heart. Listen. The word there is create a garrison around it. The way you fence it. Create a garrison. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come and pollute your heart with nonsense. That's how they are killing your life. When you come to my place, there is a protocol. You don't speak anyhow. I will walk you out. Hallelujah. You see why the Bible says, Remember not the former thing nor consider the things of old what does it mean to consider brood on it think about it many of us are experts at thinking about yesterday oh if only i did this and they warned me now that it has happened come forgetting the things that are behind i press on towards the mark of the high calling everybody say the renewal of the mind so I take the word of God, which is an ideology, and I begin to change my mindset. Everybody say, change my mindset. Yes, yes, yes. That's what begins to happen to you. So they gave birth to you in a house. There's, it, was, it was just firewood that they were gathering. You've been carrying that mindset. Suddenly you begin to find in God's word that there is a greater life. There is a better place for you in Christ. Your mind begins to wrestle it. People tell you you are good for nothing. Then you keep finding another testimony. But whose report will you believe? I choose to take the word of God. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, not the reading. The entrance, the entrance, not the reading. And understanding unto the simple. Day and night I meditate on what the Bible has said about me. And I believe it. I'm above principalities and powers. I am convinced about this. I am above. I am above. Completely above. I am blessed. I am prosperous. My heart is already totally committed to God. There is no backsliding. It's not part of the testimony of my life. It won't happen. No. I walk circumspectly. I walk by the wisdom of the spirit. Am I challenging somebody? Epignosis. The walking up applicable knowledge of the truth that you can apply in your life and you receive results what situation are you in right now do you know that if you take the word of god you can create a glorious destiny many of you are waiting for nigeria to change your destiny let me tell you ahead of time there is a root shock waiting we are the ones who are coming to change them Lift up your Bible if you have one. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I am convinced that it is not a lie. That it is truth. It is able to give me a new mindset. A new ideology. A new thought life. That will translate into a glorious destiny. I declare that I believe nothing that is not consistent with the word. I obey nothing that is not consistent with the word. Say I live the word. I talk the word. I believe the word. I act the word. I think the word.
when this becomes your life he said they are life to those who find them i'll never break down and just run and you will not come and see me on friday you say why i say ah there's something wrong no see the word has become my new eyes i have put the word in my eyes it has i am blind to any other thing that is not the word can you see the solution not the sickness can you see the breakthrough not the limitation do you see yourself rising listen this is powerful is the principle of renewal sister do you see yourself marrying or you are just sitting down and camping around your dream and saying in the dream i saw a wedding my husband was there was not there change it amazing the things we allow to govern our lives casting down every yetzah, every imagination i cast them down because if i don't cast them down they will become my reality i refuse i am not poor i may have taken gary i refuse to meditate upon that i'm well favored this is what the constitution of the kingdom tells me i'm above only it says my part is as a shining light it shines brighter i don't care even if my life is not diving as far as i'm concerned i'm shining brighter i have the spirit of faith there's no unfruitfulness in my life there's no barrenness in my life i have the spirit of faith i'm convinced about its reality i remain anointed forever no devil no jezebel can take it down it came by revelation it is sustained by revelation hallelujah koinonia keeps moving from glory to glory because the bible says whatsoever is born of god whatsoever is born of god whatsoever epignosis if you find yourself doubting the word of god at any point you truly did not believe it are you listening to me that's the proof there are many people that only believe god's word based on the result it shows if it does not seem to show any result you start looking for alternatives it means you did not believe it look at me when a woman fails to give birth does she run to go and cross check if she's a man why she's settled that there is something wrong but to ask whether she's a woman or not is not an issue hallelujah when a man is important does he run to the hospital and say doctor verify paradventure i'm a winner i'm a champion thank god i don't need another man's confession to build my life it's entirely up to me and god so this excludes my enemies out of the equation of my success i'm happy about this he said unto thee O lord do i lift up my soul he said oh my god i trust in you let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over me rise up on your feet begin to pray in one minute Come on, pray in tongues in one minute. Mande praskata pekata prakoso patataba. Whose report will you believe? Jembria takata libosa. If thy eye be single, thy body will be full of light. If thy eye be single, as a man thinketh in his heart, so will his reality become. Come on, pray in one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, listen. Can I tell you something? 
The believer is a mystery to creation. The believer is a mystery. If you don't believe this, you will die and watch others rise and it will not be God's fault. This is why you are hearing it. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Lord, I submit my life to the authority of your word. Listen. Some of you tonight, may God break that stubborn heart that will not bend to the word. Some of you, as, as small as you are, you are so stubborn. You won't bend to the word. You know what the Bible says. And there is grace already released to you. Take advantage of it. Stay with the word. Build yourself upon the word. Stay with the word. Run away from anything that is not of God. It, anything that is not of God is reprogramming your mind to failure. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I submit to your word. I submit to your word. Let him that steal, steal no more. I live by your values. Uncompromising. By your values. Your word created the heavens and the earth. I'm giving you a key that will make you blessed that will make you powerful that will give you grace for generational impact heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away my word shall not fail cry unto God Cry unto God. Your word governs my life. Your word governs my conversations. I submit. I submit. I submit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. The Bible says... As a man thinketh, what have you been allowing? What words have you been allowing to shape your mind? You listen to all kinds of corrupt and ungodly music. The problem is, they are mind builders. They control your thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen, make a determination today. That all the gates into your heart, your eyes, your ears, that you are going to culture them to make sure they only receive things that will minister life. It's a decision. It's a resolve. People will misunderstand you. But they can't stop your greatness. Hallelujah. Don't listen to any kind of thing. Don't take yourself to places that will cause you to begin to think evil. Take the word of God. Take the word of God like a drug. When you are sick, they tell you take two in the morning. Two in the Take it like that. You are going to pray right now. Listen. The Bible says, casting down every imagination. You're going to speak against anything that has informed your thoughts. You know mindsets you have that are not consistent. You're going to challenge them right now with the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to be a failure. I'm not a non-entity. No, no. I'm relevant in God's program. The grace of God is at work in my life. I can't die of that terminal disease. I can't die with that genotype. No. Lift your voice and pray. I don't believe that fibroid is a false report. I don't believe that tumor, that growth, it will die in my body. 
it will die in my body no sickness can thrive in my body no weakness i am strong strong alive mentally alert i refuse the curse of poverty i am the blessed of the lord empowered to succeed the wisdom of god is at work in my life the favor of god is at work in my life i refuse any report that is not of god i refuse it i challenge it i challenge it i challenge it reports from the media report from my past failures i challenge it make sure you are praying shake it go get the gosita i'm the head and not the tail above and not beneath i prosper i'm growing in revelation growing in insight growing in power hallelujah Let her go. Out. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's no standing for you. I break that call. I break that call. I break that call. I break that call. I break that call.
on, listen. Hold on. It doesn't matter what the problem is. Do you understand? If I ask you, it's because God told me to ask you. Whatever it is, just believe that as I'm praying for you, it's going. Are you getting my point? So move forward. Some of you, if, if we keep asking one by one, it doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Go ahead, watch it. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord. Five years of ulcer, you'll be healed, right? And discharging. Hey, don't worry. God will set you free. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus.
miracles everywhere and miracles everywhere miracles everywhere and right now right now miracles everywhere Please make sure you are praying. Don't think God is just touching the people here. There is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. lion in the spirit this guy has a wild spirit when he's angry he can kill and it's not his fault this is this is an ancestral thing see how many people trying to hold one person this is how it will tie his destiny this is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know i set you free right now this is a place of liberty leave him leave him he's free
Setting families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected, as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you, you are standing, but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now, anyone tied under any manifestation spirit husband spirit wife every manifestation of darkness as you shout the name jesus right now i command those doors to be open one two three free i set you free now right now right now right now be free I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? Your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying he's going to wipe your tears and he's going to do this speedily it's by the hand of the Lord it's where is your husband man? do you know why I'm asking you this because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah but God is going to wipe your tears please believe me when I pray for you, I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself, but I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage, listen. 
anyone here be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage right now i prophesy in the name that is above all names let those doors be open now may those doors be open now something is happening in this place may those doors be open now May those doors be open now. Madam, you will stand before the people of God when your wedding card is out. If there is a God in heaven, I break that curse right now. Now! And I release your marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? The earth is full of His glory. My life is full of Your glory. And the people say, Holy. Oh, oh, oh. And the people say, oh, Hallelujah. Oh, All of you lift your hands. God is going to do something amazing here right now. Listen. Everyone is standing for himself now, not for family. Please lift your hands. Listen. I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword. And this is a sword of judgment. This one is not for families again. There are many of us, you are walking, but you are standing because nothing is moving. Right now, in the name of Jesus, many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism is burning chaffs, burning chains some of you your academics are the way they are right now because of powers naked paratica come on now. father in the name of Jesus right now chains be broken be broken be broken chains be broken baptisms are happening baptisms of fire personal deliverances of fire 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 the fire of the holy ghost it's time for you to move forward fresh fire to move forward fresh fire no stagnation fresh fire Fresh fire, fresh fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha ya 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 We are still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now, let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. Set the roots on fire. Set the roots on fire. Let your people make progress. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's enter the realm of your academics now. There are horns. 
tired people's CGPA tired people's minds but he said I have sent carpenters lift your hands it's not everyone that is dull there are people who are studying you are doing your best right now all of those ones your hands fire is coming on your hands just your hands there will be a mighty deliverance right now one two three fire on your hands on your hands fire academic liberty fire on your hands we break those chains we break those chains we break those chains come on join me as you pray join me as you pray academic chains be broken Hallelujah. There are some of us, listen, God is setting people free tonight. One circle of tragedy as soon as he's finishing another one is starting it it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace the bible says and he dug a well and they came and closed it he dug another one and they closed it and he dug the third one and they left it and i said reho both the lord has given me room i'm praying right now please pay attention to what i'm doing this is the root cause believe me you will be wasting your time for nothing if you don't confront these powers you can receive temporary breakthrough but you will get back into the same situation hallelujah in fact we are going to pray just for one minute hallelujah you are going to pray i like you to pray like a priest in the next one to two minutes listen I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves it may be headache leave that one Lord what is the root cause of my stagnation what is the root cause of my family's problem in the name of Jesus let it be confronted tonight lift your voice and pray I pray take it, take it, take it. Ropoko poto pata. We attack the root causes of sicknesses. The root causes. Pray. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers but there are many of us here the troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones he said who's seen that this man is in this situation is it him or his father hallelujah lift your hands please lift your hands God is setting men free tonight. Anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence, as you shout the name Jesus after the count of three, 
May the fire of God separate you from the mistakes of your lineage. In the name of Jesus. One. Two. Three. Be separated. Be separated. Be separated. Now. Be separated. I break limitations. Ancestral spirits. Tribal spirits. Territorial spirits. Right now. Be free. Every name that is in any demonic cover. We set it on fire now. We set it on fire now. Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom listen keep the hands lifted just keep them lifted all instruments just stop just lift your hands and keep them lifted there is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted hallelujah the spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd listen just keep them lifted something marvelous will happen right now I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people right now let the power of god move everywhere inside and outside this water that i see an angel pouring is a cleansing is a purging of many people's foundations just keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is going on but just lift your hands if you trust that god is in this place let the angels move right now row to row line to line visit men oh god visit men Visit men. Catelato. Row to row. Water. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the water, the blood. I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities. Right now. The mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. I tell you, see, many of you will, will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you. Keep it lifted. Just keep it lifted. 
Keep it lifted. You don't know what is happening in the spirit. Just keep it lifted. Jesus. Shikaparia. Neketa. Manteporiata. I see covens on fire. I'm telling you. Covens of darkness. On fire. This is not just your family. This is your life now. You prayed for your family, but you need to move forward. Otherwise, men will think you are faking this thing. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. I see this in the spirit. A chain is falling. This is mental bondage. A chain is falling. I'm hearing sounds of chains. Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one, that you want God to do, that everyone will know that this one, I prayed it here and God did it. Are you getting my point now? I'm just walking based on the instructions of the Spirit. He wants to give you a sign of His presence in your life. I know you wrote many things. Brothers and sisters, in the next one minute, cry out one thing one just one don't be foolish pray pray i'm ministering by the influence of the spirit pray no matter how impossible it is pray sotopa unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come unto you that answers prayer Soposa leke sepanda rekete kapa mata leketa what thing soever ye desire when ye pray believe that you have received it believe that you have received it there is nothing out for my God. Pray it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request. Please go ahead. God is just leading us to pray and he's doing many things in the background. Please quickly, in one minute, let's submit the prayer request. Pass it to the last person. Pass it to the last person. Ushers, please, cooperate with us and let's hurry up. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, I'd rather have an ugly message and let people get results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Part of my, my prayer, and I, I took out time to cry. I said, Lord, your people must see your hand it says oh lord you are my god early will i seek you my heart longs after you to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary that means what i have seen in the sanctuary i am also a sanctuary reproduce the result in my life hallelujah so this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of 
personal spiritual success and let me tell you I know that it's not a very nice message I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry if you believe everything is has, has gone it has gone I wish I just wish it were like that but brothers and sisters I can tell you it is not it is not you will believe that lie to your detriment it is not we live in a rude world and there are forces otherwise the anointing of the spirit is useless what then is the purpose of the anointing what then is the efficacy of the blood why then does Paul tell us to put on hallelujah I want your life to experience breakthrough see otherwise we have no right to tell people we are not faking it are you getting my point if there is no breakthrough in your life then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying God is and one I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions I'm not that believer that likes just no there must be an evidence in your life I don't know how many times I saw this when I kept praying the Lord kept talking to me and said the root cause deal with the root cause of people's lives root cause I'm telling you it's not just healing alone that's why you notice I prayed for the sick very quickly hallelujah thank you Jesus Christ we are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here inside and outside make sure you are participating hallelujah I like you to pray and challenge every limitation whether mental whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of God lift up your voice and confront it I break limitations if there are no limitations you will make progress if there are no limitations you will make progress please everyone pray take this seriously even if you are walking be praying as you're walking Lord, I challenge limitations. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no boundaries. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. So potoko pata da 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 da. So preteke le bondo subandi le kabaria. So preteke le boko to ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. I'm going to be laying hands on these requests hallelujah pair yourselves into two find a man or a woman of prayer we are challenging limitations that word limitation media project it that word limitation write it that's the word we are attacking this night ye have tarried in this mountain for too long he said turn ye not words hallelujah hold on before you pray while I lay my hands here. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of the person you are going to pray. If there is nobody, you can join and make two or three. Say in the name of Jesus.
One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I come as an ambassador of the kingdom. And I challenge every limitation in every area of my life. I command it to bow down. The Bible says, Naaman, hear me, Second Kings 5. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a mighty man, but tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives. You are academically excellent, but there are limitations. I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying, Lord, in this miracle service, this is it. Hallelujah. While I pray in the next two to three minutes, instrumentalists play, clash the cymbal, and everyone pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor. If he's joking, leave him and hold another person.
I believe with all my heart that God is confronting limitations. Many of you don't know what limitations are. You, poverty is a limitation. Are you getting my point? Spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation. A prayerless life is a capital limitation. A wordless life is a limitation. When you are supposed to get married and you've not gotten married, it's a limitation. Academic backwardness. See, there are very few people who are here for, for sicknesses and all. It's, it's limitation. That's the name of what you are going through. Hallelujah. Before I prophesy, we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done. We're still going to pray. Don't be tired. I beg you, just follow through with me. If you believe that I hear God and if you believe we are walking by the Spirit, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. Limitation. I know a brother, listen, listen. I know a brother that for many years, this gentleman was so gifted, but I'm telling you, nothing was working in his life. Please hear me. This is a true story. Very gifted, but things were tied down. Hallelujah. He did everything, did everything, that, that he knew to do. But when God made him know that these things are limitations, he took a quality time of his life challenging it. And brothers and sisters, when he prevailed, doors were open. It was as if the blessings have left heaven, but to now come to this realm. And Daniel remained in prayer. Please hear me. Anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough it's not the issue of i'm called into the ministry of prayer or not forget that nonsense that the devil brings men ought always luke 18 1 he spake this parable if you are alive you don't pray because of fear you pray because it's a spiritual transaction it makes things possible in this realm hallelujah we are going to pray one more time. And you are going to say, Lord, one more time. Visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Mention the aspects where you are facing limitation. Don't feel embarrassed. Mention them and say, Lord, let your fire come upon it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, pray. Pray your way to breakthrough. Sopata, teka, repoto pakata, sente teke pretekete, superiata daraba. We lift up an incense of prayer. 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 Change lives. Break limits, financial limits, support sata, intellectual limits, marital limits, job limits. We break it. Support opata. We break limitations, business limitations. Ministry limitations, limitations of potentials. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Every time limits are broken, the Lord will bring a man to hold your hands and create the opportunity for the next level of your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bishop Oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days. May this night be the certain day. Listen. Your next level is in the hands of a certain man. The Bible says 
they wanted to kill joseph but a certain man came and they said they wanted to buy him if not because of that certain man they would have killed him are you following me now the bible talks about a man who was crippled he could not carry himself certain men no names they lifted him and opened the sea oh god whoever is that certain man that must appear in my destiny i come i compel them to come lift your voice and pray lift your voice destiny help us financial help us spiritual help us men of influence men of access Sopotoposh, Rokotoposh, Reketetete, men that will connect us to our next level, men that will connect us to our next dimension. Please pray, 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 pray. Lord, we call them forth. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, hear me the prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption but he was hanging on that cross there was no place to bury him and a certain man came called joseph of arimathea an influential man if he was poor and broke the king would not hear him the bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised you are going to pray concerning your finances does it make sense to you to pray we are going to pray and say lord whoever must appear to change my financial destiny i receive their ministry come on now pray come on now pray supported time and chance happens to them all time and chance be it a cyrus or a son of the kingdom We embrace their ministry. We embrace their ministry. So put up photos. I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence. Kings, destiny help us, spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us, men of influence, men who can talk to kings, pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison although anointed there are many people here your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it announce it and let the world celebrate it John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry are you hearing what I'm saying there are many of us we have great ideas great businesses but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here please hear what i'm saying there are many of you your your academic qualification is bigger than where you are you have done your best when you have done all you need to do you need another man who is not you are you hearing what i'm saying certain men certain men It was the wine presser that told the king he said i know my wrongs this day there is a man oh there is a man many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials you have sharpened your leadership potentials it's not pride you know that it's time to break forth but the distance between you and the next level is that certain man lift up your hands oh god where is this certain man let him come into my life come on pray one more time
pray. It takes one man to change your business. One man to change your ministry. One man. One man. Hallelujah. Listen to me. There are many of you here with great business ideas. Hallelujah. All you need is capital. You have done everything you should do. You need somebody to believe in you enough. Hallelujah. Listen. Truly, the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. One man can announce what God is doing in your life. And bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it. I shared that scripture. To none of the widows in Israel was the prophet sent. God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him. Many of you have been in a place. You have potentials for the throne. But something is tying you down. Because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life. Is God speaking to someone here? There are many of our parents with their qualifications. They should never have to beg. Even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day, they should not be begging. But they need one man to announce them. One man to recommend them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Because this is somebody's prayer request. Oh Lord, if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just 100,000 there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us in ministry here. We are great people. This ministry you see today, we enjoy recommendations. Mysterious recommendations. While I was coming, somebody was trying to call me again and again from the UK. And he was saying, man of God, don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number. He said, when a man is in trouble, you will look for help anyhow. Are you getting my point? While you are sitting down to sleep, somebody is waking others to talk about you. But you must activate it. It doesn't happen by magic. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry. There are many of you who graduated with excellent results. You've even added masters. And the king sent for Joseph. Somebody must send for you to leave the level that you have. And I prophesy, whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names. Listen, listen. There is a man of God, a popular man of God. I'll not mention names. The man had the gift of God like whatever but nothing could announce that grace are you hearing what I'm saying people needed his anointing and his gift but nobody could announce it and then something happened one day he entered a taxi true story when he entered the taxi the Holy Spirit told him sow a seed of 30,000 naira to the driver and he didn't have much and he told the driver take and he sowed that seed Ah, the driver looked at him. He said, what will I give you? He said, nothing. He said, sir, can I collect your number? And he collected his number. Please listen to me. This is a true story. When he collected his number, the guy dropped. He said, Tom, may God bless you. He was feeling bad. He did not know that that was his moment of victory. Listen, the very next person that will enter that car, listen, they were part of the regional organizers of Redeem, the convention in UK. Are you getting me? One of the regions. And then the man was talking and said, Kai, we are looking for a man of God to complete the ministers we are bringing. And we need men of integrity, you know. And the driver said, sir, there was a man that gave me his number. This guy is a true man of God. And that was it. I'm serious. They called him and they said, sorry, we are from this, this region of Redeem. I tell you, they brought that man after that ministration. There were so many men of God that he never would have been able to see. Are you getting my point? They all called him and said, we'd like you to come and, and minister. 
Mike Mudok met a young man who was very gifted. Gifted, but there was nothing working in his life. And Mike Mudok looked at him and came. And he said, God told me to bless you. He wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said, this is an anointed man. Please open doors for him. And the guy got 17 invitations. Everybody. It does not take time to change your story. What looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you tired of praying? Are you tired of praying? Because we must call them for. I don't want to waste your time. Let me just share it. I don't know if you shared this testimony. Did you share your testimony, Erima? I'm not sure he shared his testimony. Maybe at an appointed time, but let me say a bit of it. What ambassador? Eh? Unilever. This come. He just came back today. We met together at the airport in Abuja and then we came back together. By the grace of God, are you getting my point? And by the ministry of just one great man, Prof. Hallelujah. He has been selected as the ambassador of Unilever Nigeria. Are you, listen, listen, listen. The race is not to the swift. They just came back from their training in Lagos. And we even bombed. I was waiting for my luggage and I just saw him. And they had told me, he called me in Lagos and he said he was around. We never met. How God can change a man's story. My father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering. There was no man to lift him. His genius were rising and they, they, they just trampled this man. And it so happened that one man who used to be his junior, he went, when we went for crusade in 2006, six years, he was the one who interpreted for me. And he was also the one who interpreted for Renard Bonke when he came to Joss. He was that man. On account of the kindness, he went and said one or two things about my father. And when they went to my father's um, CV and all of that, they said, where has this man been? They said, immediately, he should leave Joss and report to Lagos. He has been there for three years now. Many of us are praying, Lord, take me to the next level. I'm telling you the secret. You need a man. Hear me. There are things you cannot do for yourself. You may be anointed, but your grace will remain there until a man can announce. You may have a great business, a multi-million and billion dollar business, but it takes one man to believe in you and announce you. Are you getting my point? I know one of my friends. He was my classmate. Very intelligent and brilliant guy. This guy finished, furthered his education. There was nobody to speak for him. And this guy kept struggling for years. Nobody to speak for him. And one day I, I prayed. I said, oh Lord, what help this guy. This guy has paid the price. Look, when I say, I, I think I will classify him as a genius. And I'm not telling a lie. But I know other people, before they even finish service, the road has been made plain. You need someone in your life. Please pray and say, oh God, send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life. Please pray. Send a man to change my music ministry, oh God. Send a man. Send a man into my family. Koinonia, pray, we are rounding up. Sopotopata. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man into my life. Pray for your business. Pray for your job. One recommendation is all you need. One man who can believe in you. Struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you. Struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. I want to prophesy into your life. I truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. As much as possible, if you can stand, stand inside and out. Hast thou commanded thy morning? This system of God's kingdom does not work without it being activated. Hallelujah. Don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking, there is something that is happening. Hallelujah. We are entering the eighth month. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I prophesy right now whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus business help us ministry help us marriage help us anyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above all names we command by the power of the holy ghost let doors of job be open right now let it be open right now anyone called barry 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 in the name that is above all names we provoke fruitfulness we provoke fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Anything in your life that is dying, business, ministry, potentials, your gift, your ideas, your proposals, your letters, your visions, your dreams, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I command that let there be life, 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 life to that dry bone. Hallelujah. Everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life, that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn, in the name that is above all names, may supernatural doors of favor be open right now. hallelujah i want to pray for your finance the lord is leading me to do this as many of you who believe it please can you hold a seed in your hand get a seed for some of you it may be a sacrificial seed if you don't believe it just just forget about it we don't cajole people we don't tell lies i want to speak into your finances hallelujah please lift it up is a prayer and a duty that God will come through in every area of our life. But well, let me tell you something. It will take a seed to open up the heavens. Just leave the hands. Leave the hands. I want to rebuke the devourer. For some of you, this is for you a seed of mercy to speak over your non-tithing. For some of you, this is a seed of wisdom to open you up to ideas of wealth. For some of you, this is a seed of open heavens, a seed of breakthrough. Just lift it up. Lift it up. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me 11 people. The fire of God is coming on your seed from your hand. 11 people. 11 people. Right now. Lord, let your power move. Let them know that this is not just a conjuring of men. Eleven people. Eleven people. Super Yatamba. Let that seed be salted with fire. We give it a voice in the realm of the spirit. Please lift it up. Let me speak. With this seed, ayah, 
the power of God is moving because poverty poverty is one thing that God hates don't ever let anybody convince you that God is the author of lack and poverty your seed your seed is the key to getting out of this level trust me this is not a financial gimmick father right now with this seed in the mighty name of Jesus every spirit of poverty goodness goodness how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits I see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of Jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of Jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we are rounding up please quickly ushers let's save time many of you will experience breakthroughs mighty breakthroughs lift your hands we are not done please we're out of time. We have to hurry up. Please make sure you drop something. Make sure a seed leaves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep the hands lifted. The ushers will get to you. But please, there is somebody outside. Ah, a mighty manifestation. The spirit of poverty is being broken outside outside just lift your hands please i know we're out of time just give me one minute you don't need to bring the people outside just keep the, the hands lifted father whoever those people are let the fire of god locate them right now right now right now right now poverty be broken i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit Hallelujah. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. And through my giving, I access that inheritance. Father, now I'm praying for you now. Every limitation over anyone's life, may that limitation fall now. And every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of Jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give Jesus praise Lord Jesus. give Jesus praise hallelujah let me make an altar call very quickly right now there are many of us here you have never given your heart to the lord please listen inside and outside we've never truly made that commitment to jesus some of us have given our hearts to the lord but we have found ourselves derailing and tonight god is calling you home wherever you are please leave your seat and come right now celebrate them they are coming celebrate them don't wait for anybody jump up on your feet and come outside wherever you are god is talking to you and saying you need to make your your ways right with jesus please come god bless you god bless you god bless you don't wait for anybody don't wait for anybody don't be ashamed i know there are a number of people outside jesus is calling you to make your ways right jesus is calling you keep coming god bless you hallelujah we're out of time keep coming pray after me say Lord Jesus I give you my heart take my everything use me for your glory today I make Jesus Lord of my life I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God 
I denounce sin, I denounce Satan, and I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life. Father, I pray for these ones. Bless them, anoint them, use them. May their decisions last. May their decisions be true. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. Follow the usher and he's going to lead you. Hallelujah. Now, while I take the announcement, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you. God bless you. We celebrate you. Outside, no matter how far you are, come. Come, encourage them, Koinonia. Encourage them. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Come on, Koinonia. This is not the best. We are grateful people in this house. We are grateful people. He brought them by the finger of God. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Thank you so much for making our time to come. Hallelujah. We honor you. We celebrate you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. This is our miracle service. We are here every Friday and God is building us. We want to pray and prophesy into your life right now. I want you to believe it because you will see the hand of God. The Bible says, who has believed our report and to whom the hand of the Lord has been stretched? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's bless them. They came because they believed that God will step into their lives. Stretch your hands. We prophesy over every aspect of your life. God is coming through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge you came here with, we are assuring you that you will not return with it. We bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you be mightily used of God. In Jesus name. Thank you once again for coming. Please I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you very briefly. And you'll be Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.